Time now to answer some of your business questions. So let's get our board of directors in here to help us out. Marketing expert and change agent Jeffrey Hazlett is the head of the Hazlett Group. And Alfred Edmund is the senior vice president and chief content officer for Black Enterprise, where he's responsible for all aspects of marketing for the company's major franchises. So good to see both of you guys. We have a marketing powerhouse panel today. This is a one-two punch <laughs> right here. All right, let's get to the first question. It's about landing a contract for business. As a certified women-owned business, I get a lot of RFPs in the mail, and I would love to submit and bid and win a contract for an RFP. So I'd love any help out there for requests for proposals on tips and tricks on how to actually get one of these contracts. I think this is a great question. You get something in the mail, you get excited because you fit, but it's actually the pitch that's going to get you the, the work or not. Well, it's not just the pitch. It's also getting to know the organization a little bit better. A lot of those RFPs already have an insider. Yep. And they're just going out to make sure that they're getting the best deal from that person they already have. So get to know who's making the decisions. Find out some of the influencers. Get to them and see if you even have a chance. A lot of times going after RFP is a waste of time. And by the way, how do you do that? So well, you start LinkedIn, all those kinds of things. Use social media. Find out who those people are. Go on their website. You'll find out who those people are pretty quickly. Well, also, I mean, she's a woman-owned business. Uh -huh. I mean, there are supplier development councils both within the company as well as in each region of the country that's designed to match up suppliers with purchasing agents so you know who to talk to, how to make yourself stand out so it's not just your RFP versus someone else's RFP. Because when all is said and done, these purchasing agents want to do business with people who make them look good. Right. Which is why they stay with the people well, they know and already. And Alfred just said something that was really, really important, and that is there's a lot of uh, support groups inside that group. So yes. there are women groups looking for women business owners. Yep. Get to know them. They'll help do the politics inside that company. Okay, let's move on to the next question about streamlining your operations. With technology, is there any way to automate your um, your management, your business management, or your marketing functions of your business? I like that she's asking the questions. It is a big question. But, but there's some rules of thumb that I have about the whole thing about automation. Um, and I'll give two big ones. You automate things, not people. Mm -hmm. So using automation to replace things that really need human interaction almost never works. Anybody who's called the customer service line and gotten a thing, not right. a person, knows that. The second thing is to always remember that your automation should be about two things, growing revenue and making it easier for the customer or the client, not necessarily making it easier for you. Mm -hmm. And so the most efficient internal processes, if they don't result in boosted revenues and a more efficient experience for your customer or client, that kind of automation could be very expensive on both ends, the cost of getting it and the impact on your business. I'm, I'm always surprised, though, that business owners don't automate certain things that are time-consuming, things like their accounting and yes. those types of things. I, lots of businesses I know that don't even use QuickBooks or some other kind of version of that. But on your marketing side, depending on your size, there's, there's products like Marketo, there's pro products like HubSpot, there's products like MailChimp that make those doing of the emails faster, that make the automation mm -hmm. so that when someone you know clicks on your website and says, I'm in interested, an automatic letter goes back from the president of the company, which is you. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of little things like that that you can do that are time consuming and you can utilize every single day. I think the way for her to think about this is to first go into her business and say, okay, where am I spending my time? And what is very tedious for me to do? And what, what, where do I think I could speed things up? Or what do I need measured that I'm not getting measured right but, now? And how can you shrink the distance between you and your messaging and the customer? If automation, such as you know, Infusionsoft, Mailchimp, and those things, yep. does that, right. it shrinks the dis difference, the distance between what your messaging is and how to actually contact the customer. But as a business owner, know those steps. Do it yourself first. Yes, yes, I yes. Mean, using Salesforce or whatever, yeah. do it first. Yeah, yeah. I, I am also surprised when we're talking about automation on the finances. You mentioned. In this. Uh, all the time. Um, how do you people really understand their numbers? And they're all kinds of well, ways to do it right there. There's a tendency to think that the software or the machinery is going to do it for them. You yeah. still have to know your numbers cold. You sure. have to know what but you're But this gives you a way to at least look at them. At least yes. look at it. Right? Even if you're using a Spence Cloud or something like that, take pictures of your receipts rather than a shoebox to your accountant at the end of the year. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on to the last question. It's about your all important brand. When a small business or a company is rebranding themselves or branding themselves for the first time, when is the best point in that process to trademark the brand that they've created? Jeffrey? 
Yeah. Well, right away. I was going to say right away you want to start thinking about those things. Not necessarily go through the full registration of that, but at least trademark it to say, you know, this is my prior art, this is my name, this is the thing that I'm using. But the biggest thing is build your brand. A brand's nothing but a promise delivered. Build the brand. Work on the services, work on the product that you're delivering first before you even really begin to think about the name. First of all, you don't have to formally register for a trademark mm -hmm. or, you know, at the beginning. As soon as you start offering your product or service, you should be using that TM symbol because that in effect serves notice to the marketplace that this is your brand, this is your trademark. Researching to make sure that the branding you're going to use is not in fact being used by someone else. But then you can, once you start putting products and services to market, you should use that TM symbol. Right. Then once it's registered, then it switches to the little R in the circle. And every time I've started a new company or a new product, the first thing I do is come up with a name or a list of names, check to see if someone's using it, if they're not using it, and then I go to my attorney and say, now go look yes. for those names. Yes. Right. And see, and if no one has them, then I start to secure that process right. while I'm doing exactly while what Ralph, Alfred is talking about. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Great advice from both of you guys, as always. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. And if any of you out there have a question for our experts, we answer them every week on the show. So send them in. The address is openforum.com slash yourbusiness. Once you get there, hit the Ask the Show link to submit a question, or you can email us. The address is yourbusiness at msnbc.com.